30 Odd Minutes is sponsored in part by Digital Dowsing. Who are you powered by? For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy. To ghostly phenomena in our own backyard. We will dive into our psychic abilities. And explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Hey! All right. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. It's good to have you guys with us here aboard the mothership hovering high above Earth. There she is. Nice view. I can see my house. (laughs) Not for long. Oh, man. We won't zap it tonight. Uh, Tonight we're talking about how the media explores the unexplained. Which is, uh, it's going to be very interesting. We're going to have a whole roundtable discussion. We want to include you guys, the oddballs, if you're in our chat room at 30oddminutes.com. You can jump in. Matt's watching. I'll try to watch as I can. Uh, We're going to play some news clips, talk about some recent uh, events, and some not-so-recent events that have made the media and helped define what we're going to cover. We're going to cover all kinds of things. UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts. It's going to be a whole smorgasbord. Um, And, uh, you know, I know there's going to be lots of requests because everybody's got their favorite topics, including Dr. Drek. Take a look. Dr. Drek. Greetings, oddballs. Dr. Drek here. And I think one of the subjects tonight should be the fact that I know that chocolate is a sentient being. And we should all know that if you don't know it already, because I'll tell you something. It's just like one of those mythological sirens, you know, that would call the ships to crash upon the rocks. So does chocolate call me and crashes my giant on the rocks of failure. I tell you, why else Why else would I be sitting at home alone, not thinking of it, and all of a sudden, bang, I've got the desire for chocolate and raisins and nuts covered in milk chocolate. Or, or how about when you're standing at the store, huh, checking out? You're not thinking of chocolate then, but then all of a sudden you look down and you hear its siren call and you can see, you can see the caramel and the, and the chocolate and nougats and nuts and, oh, those peanut butter cups, oh, especially two of them. They're just saying... Take me, take me, you know you want me. Oh, I tell you, it's it's telepathic and it's hypnosis. And I think it's about time it's been exposed. Thank you, Dr. Drek. Is he hiding in the, uh, the, the cleaning closet, the janitor's closet now? I don't know. <laughs> it's where they keep all the paper towels. Yeah, sure. okay. <laughs> we love him dearly. <laughs> Oh, this is why we lock him up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we have to sometimes. It's true. All right, so the whole idea of this premise, it comes from a lot of things, but uh, recently a friend I went to high school with, uh, thank you, Jane, sent me a, um, a memo that was given to her grandfather back when he was a Vermont state trooper, and this memo is dated April 20th, 1966. Take a look. It's to all K-troop personnel regarding UFO landings, and here's standard operating procedures. Immediately notify the lieutenant and sergeant. Advise dispatcher to call the commissioner, uh, major, and captains. Three, notify the governor. He should be on hand to welcome to Vermont. Notify civil defense director. There is the possibility of radioactivity. Notify uh, development department. They may be interested in an industrial site, of course. Secure the area. Don't let unauthorized personnel within half a mile of the scene. This applies particularly to press, radio, TV. Seven, have adequate supply of welcome to unspoiled Vermont brochures for distribution to our visitors. Eight, use dosimeter to check radioactivity. Nine, do not touch or attempt to board the UFO. And ten, extend all courtesies and hospitality to our visitors from outer space. We certainly don't want to start an intergalactic war. So, of course, very tongue-in-cheek, kind of yeah. funny. A little, I mean, bit, little bit serious, and then, yeah, it slips in and out of the, the humor. But it made the paper. I mean, yep. you know, the newspaper covered it. There it is. I mean, kind of repeats what the memo said. And then, not to be outdone, the, the then-governor, Philip H. Hoff, responded with his memo, Please be advised that I am in complete agreement with the standard operating procedures regarding UFO landings, with one exception. I believe at the time of debarkation, a member of the Liquor Control Board should be on hand with an up-to-date price list of their inventory. Funny, tongue in cheek, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Here's what got me though. I said, you know, this memo, this whole ordeal, could have just as easily have happened a week ago. This is how, uh, you know, often people 
treat this subject. Um, UFOs in this case, we'll talk about other things later. Um, yet there's, there are some things that you probably should do. You probably should notify the, you know, the lieutenant and sergeant. You should advise the commissioner, the major, and the captain. You, know, um, you should approach with a DOS meter. And, yeah, right. You know. yeah. So, so on the one hand, sometimes by making a joke of something, we're, we're actually preparing ourselves. It's, it's the same way, you know, especially Americans have always dealt with tragedy with humor, right? It, it, it's not oh, that, yeah. not oh, that yeah. we're being callous or, or whatever. It's just No, it's been said that we, part of the reason why we won World War II is because we had a better sense of humor than the, the access. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and so sometimes by, by making a joke of things, we're actually kind of readying ourselves for... Um, yeah. you know, it's a defense mechanism. I right. find that's, it, how, that's how most people yeah. deal with things oh, yeah. that are scary to them. They, it's, it's humor. Right. So this is 1966, and there's no doubt is, are some protocols for what to do in various, uh, you know. Well, the, I know the Firefighter's Guide has a whole section devoted to UFO cases if they encounter stuff. It, now, it's, I, I hadn't heard this before. And, and Eric, if you could hit my, uh, my laptop here. Look at this. Here's, here it is. This is um, right out of the, I don't know if you can see this. This is the UFO threat of fact. In this chapter, we will now turn our attention to the very real threat posed by unidentified flying objects, whether they exist or not. And, and that's a good point, whether they exist or not. Um, because really, what we're talking about is if something unidentified does crash, right, forget what you know or think you know. Right. You have to deal with things a certain way and be professional. Right. Um, you know, unidentified... Some cases doesn't mean that it's extraterrestrial. It could be NASA, it could be yeah. Air Force, right? Right. right. Could be a junk. foreign, exactly. foreign government. Of right. course, it's unidentified. So, uh, so on the one hand, it's it's not a bad idea to have these these protocols in place. So, um, so the memo was tongue in cheek. So the media got to be tongue in cheek, and everyone got to have some good, clean fun with it. No harm done, no foul. But interesting, 1966 could have just as easily been a week ago. But more often than not, uh, I think this next clip that we're going to play in just a second is more typical about how the, the media um, tends to approach these, these um, you know, paranormal, unexplained stories. Take a look at this. This was a, a, a news clip regarding a Parma, Ohio, uh, November 2007 security camera at a gas station. Take a look. Well, a lot of people are doing double takes at a gas station these days. <laughs> That's because of the $3 That's price right, tag. Yeah. However, at an Ohio station, it's not just because of the pumped up prices. Take a look at what was spotted on a surveillance camera. It's an eerie blue blob. And some people believe this is a ghost. The station owner says the image floated around the pumps for about half an hour and then just disappeared. No one knows for sure what it is. You know what the ghost was saying? Lower the price. Okay. Yeah. Now, first of all, we know that clip, right, has been pretty yeah. well debunked. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, just to explain, um, a, a tiny, a tiny bug or lint or, or right, you right. know, cobwebs getting really, really close to that lens turns blue and, and glows because the, the the lens can't focus on it. It's, Seen it's, it happen with a friend of mine's right. security camera at his house. It freaked right. him out, and I had to debunk it for him. Yeah, because the, the lens is trying to look down at the pumps for security reasons, not focus on something really close. Well, bear in mind, most of those security cameras are fixed focal length. Right. Right. Yeah. So. so so pretty well debunked, but we're showing that more as an example of how the media covers it. So so you, you've got the reporter saying, "Ooh, spooky prices at the pump." Okay, that's very funny. And and by taking that tongue in cheek approach, uh, I guess the the serious journalists get to say, "Well, down the road when it gets debunked, they can say, I told you so.' Yeah, yeah, they cover themselves. Yeah, right. I didn't want to do this. And ironically, when something can't be explained, and, and that makes the news sometimes too." I don't usually hear about it again. No. Yeah. It'll make the splash. Yep. You know, hey, look at this photo. Look at this video clip. Look at this whatever. Um, you know, I, I recall, remember the UFO over Israel, that, that bright yes. light that went zooming up? Yes. Caught all over the city from Very different strange. cameras. And then... And everybody was like, wow, that's weird. And then you never heard, heard about, about it again. again. That's right. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah. when it's debunked, you hear about it, but not when it's not. You know, and on a, and on a side note about that, that specific case, uh, those people, um, American citizens, they were originally from the Middle East. Right. And I know that the, uh, from seeing an, another interview that the guy did, he was genuinely scared by it. He thought it was a gin. I mean, this, this really rattled him. Right. And the thing is, is, you know, again, you're making fun of someone's belief system. Yeah, maybe, you know, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a piece of debris floating in front of the lens, and I wish sure. I knew the guy so I could sit him down and maybe calm him down, but I know to this day he still thinks he had a gin 
messing with him and his family at the gas station. Right. But, but what's interesting, too, is, and I, and I wonder, you know, in this, this age of viral videos and, and YouTube clips and things like that, stuff gets so popular. The, who, who's leading the charge? Is it the public making it popular on YouTube? Mm -hmm. And then the press goes, well, we better cover it, too, or people are going to stop right. looking to us for right. this kind of stuff. Um, or you know, is, does one feed the other, I guess is my question. Well, bear in mind with that particular incident you're talking about, there was other people that did some investigation and follow-up, and the military actually fired a couple of grenades at the thing, and that's what a couple of the explosions. In Israel. Actually, in Israel, in, yes. In Israel. Yeah, Not at the yeah. bug in the camera. No, no, no that, yeah. that would have been cool. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> no, because, <laughs> because it was sighted over the Dome of the Rock, right. which is one of yeah. the very highly secured areas because you have multiple faces yeah. that yes. are, are, are laying claim to this, and they, they keep a very tight guard around that whole right. perimeter. Right. And anything that incurs into that uh, zone is considered a threat. But again, did the media talk about that? Mm. No. Yeah, exactly. But there are reports of, you know, of the guards firing at it. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, Matt, you've got something for us from the Hindustan Times. Check this out. Yeah. Tell us. Well, uh, this is a, about a company that uh, is taking basically your tweets and sending them into space. And they're, they're sending them to a star system in Galicia uh, 526, which is about 17.6 uh, light years away from Earth. And uh, it's from uh, a free, basically a, a free tweet. We can send our own stuff if you sign up, and we get to send a message into space, as does anybody else if they go visit the website. So this is cool. I, I was intrigued because I only heard about this today from Matt. And, um, and I went to the website... Eric, you can bring this up. Um, <clears throat> this is it. The, the, this is their website. It's LoanSignal.com. And so I went ahead, and I already signed up for an account. And it's true. You can send for free 140 characters. And so I thought right here, live on the show, uh, we could go ahead and do that. Guys, what, what message should we send to the, the star system? Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. All right, that makes sense. Resistance is futile. Oops, futile. You will, I'm going to capitalize this, will be assimilated. Yeah, be forceful. All right. So, so here we go. We're about to send a tweet uh, 17.6 light years away. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. Boy, this feels more permanent than sending a tweet, tweet on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Transmit. Okay. Oh, it's done. Wow. That wow. is pretty cool. Right here on uh, yeah, thirty yeah. odd minutes, we've just sent a. <laughs> there was, now we got to send, uh, yeah, dirty jokes and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Toilet humor, yeah. So isn't that great? We can now yeah. send send our, as if Twitter wasn't innocuous enough, and the Library of Congress, of course, saves all our tweets. Now we're sending them to other star systems. And the NSA forwards them on to the White House. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's yeah. a whole other weird story. Yeah. No, it's good. And you know what? I mean, there's some emails I've sent where I'm like, no one's even reading this. But it's good to know. Someone yeah. is. Someone, someone is. is. Someone yeah. is appreciating my wit and humor. So, All right. This is not the only space uh, news you've got. Matt, tell us. Well, yeah. There's uh, another thing that they've discovered back in 2010. Uh, December 13th, they... Uh, they took a series of photographs of the, of, of the nighttime sky mm -hmm. and various cameras, and they found that there's a particular region that is basically cold, devoid of any star systems and stuff. And uh, experts um, in the University College of London and several other uh, universities are looking at this and thinking there may be a parallel universe to ours. Right. So wow. now we've got the clip um, wow. number five. There it is. So I mean, this is you know, this isn't just like paranormal stuff. This is science now. Right. You know. So cosmic. I love the headline. Cosmic radiation uh, features could suggest our universe is not alone. The word universe, as an English major geek, right? Universe means yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So, uh, but the suggestion when when I read this article talked about we might be seeing remnants of another universe that collided with ours or whatever, it, or right. is colliding, is or colliding. we're yeah. Yeah. we're extracting from. That's the weird part about this is trying to determine because you determine direction by the shift in color. Right. Red and blue will determine you know if something's coming at you or receding from from you. And this is devoid of any color. So this is one of those things is like, 
are we coming away from this? Are we heading towards, towards this? Towards it, right, right. Yeah. right. Wow. And, it, and here's a case where us weirdos start saying, well, wait a minute, people have been talking about parallel universes, other dimensions for a long, long time. Could it be that uh, the science is starting to prove these ideas and theories? Now, they don't go there. No. S- science, you know, science now doesn't go there, but, um, but at the same time, it, it begs a lot of questions. Sure. If there was another universe, well, obviously the word universe is not the right term. Yeah, um, there, yeah there but... There something else, right? And, and, uh, and if there are still remnants, is it affecting us? Are we affecting it? Um, are we, you know, is, is it... You're getting into, um, you know, Schrodinger there. Right. You know. Is the cat alive or dead? Yeah. yeah. Or... Is it both? Or Heisenberg. Right. The, the act of observing or changing the, the yeah, status. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Wow. So, Sorry for getting into all the science. <laughs> no, I'm a scientist. I can't help it. <laughs> no, but I, I think stuff like that comes up, and it's it's great. It's it's this uh, it's it's really interesting because it, it it just it gives us more questions, more things to talk about. It, and and the bottom line, and this, I mean, I know the reason I pursue the paranormal is it reminds me every day that we don't have all the answers. No, no. we don't no. know everything. The universe is vast. We are small, and uh, and that's that kind of stuff keeps me going. When you see a ghost. Uh, you say, whoa, it's not just black and white. It's yeah. not just life and death. Yeah. When you see a UFO or you hear about some of these abduction reports, you start to say, maybe... There's got to be something to th- it. There's yeah. something out there in the universe, and maybe it's here too. You know, when, when you hear about Bigfoot sightings and other monsters and things like that, th- th- these questions keep coming up. We don't know every creature that lurks, yeah. even no, our planet. And especially every year goes by, they find uh, an animal on the planet. They find over 10,000 yeah. animals Per year, yeah, that they never thought that they never discovered, and they range from microscopic to whales. Yeah, right. Friends of whales, yeah. and sure. whales yeah. and sharks. Yeah, so. no, it's a, it's an amazing world. It's it's why we do these things. So, um, you know, speaking of pursuing the paranormal, Andrew, you've got a story. Yeah, this happened just uh, May seventh, uh, twenty thirteen, uh, out in Santee, California, which is right outside San Diego. Yeah, uh, the historic Edgemore uh, Barn, uh, the historic society out there in Santee, California. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a museum. It just made its um, 100th birthday, and a member of the society, Ellen uh, Henry, was going around taking photographs of the barn because they were going to make up a uh, new logo for the Historic Society. And she was taking pictures, and she says that she's sure that she didn't hear any aircraft or see any aircraft while she was taking the picture. And when she took this photograph, she did notice on the, the, the screen of her camera that there was a speck in the sky. Right. And oddly enough, right after this picture, her camera stopped working properly. Um, it was uh, p- then picked up by um, uh, ABC News out there, Channel 10, and a reporter named uh, Janet uh, uh, Kwok uh, picked up the uh, story. And this is one of those cases where the media actually handled the story with respect mm-hmm. and found it fascinating and did present it to the public like, hey, what do you think? Um, the, uh, the woman... Um, Ellen Henry did not want her face shown on TV because she was actually rattled by it, and she didn't know how to handle it yet. Uh, But the other thing that's so uh, interesting about this um, is that the barn is haunted. Right. It used to be part of of a um, a, a poor farm, a a hospital. Um, And it's so haunted that the Historic Society actually has a log in the museum for the employees or guests or whoever to write down their experiences. Hmm. And uh, kind of like Lizzie's. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, you know, not only did I find this interesting because the media did treat it with respect, they did do a very good report on it. You can find it uh, on the internet. Uh, but you have a UFO story and a ghost story kind of overlapping. Right. And Matt has said this so many times to me that uh, in his experience as a paranormal investigator, that you have cryptozoologists. Uh, running into ghosts and ghost hunters running into UFOs and sure. and, and uh, yeah we have uh, Don Keating of the Bigfoot that was, uh, Ohio that was, Bigfoot he sent Matt this fantastic EVP mm-hmm. that he caught in in the dark trying to catch what he thought may have been you know Sasquatch calls his farmer had told him about these strange calls in the woods and he's out there and didn't hear any Squatch calls but he was playing his recordings back to listen to the animal sounds that he did catch and he catches a voice saying I miss my house. He tells right. the, the owner of the property later about it, and what he didn't know in the dark is there was the burned-out ruins of an old farmhouse right behind him, and the family died in the fire. Wow. And he, So <laughs> this is, we have a Bigfoot hunter, a cryptozoologist, yeah. encounters a ghost. But I thought this was a fantastic story because you have this terrific photograph of what I see as a UFO. The reporter from uh, ABC News did contact the two closest air stations, one of them being military and one of them being a civilian, and 
they had no comment on the photograph. They looked at it and went, don't know what to tell you. So you have good reporting, you have a great right. picture of a UFO, you have a, a, a documented ghost sightings, and uh, a reliable witness. I mean, this lady is, uh, she's not a, you know, a right. kook who believes in the paranormal. Well, look she's at the area it. that it's in. Okay. San Diego, yeah. Okay, what do you got right outside of San Diego in the water? Oh, oh yeah, you have the, uh, the fam- uh, Catalina. The, right. Yeah, right, Catalina it's, Island, yeah. yeah. There's been tons and tons of UFO oh, reports. Oh, and it should be mentioned that uh, a month before this sighting, uh, I, I believe it was MUFON, I may be mistaken, it may not have been MUFON, but one of the big UFO groups did say that a UFO sighting was reported to them in that area. We have a close-up, too, of that same UFO. Um, yeah. If we could bring up, uh, yeah, there it is. So there's a close-up, and we get even closer. I mean, it, it looks like a metal disc. Yeah, um, I mean, know, it doesn't kind. look like your military drones. Yes, you do have a, a marine base nearby, and the marines do use drones, but so far I have not seen a drone that looks it, like that. The other interesting thing about San Diego is that, that if, you, if you cast the net a little wider, there's a lot going on in that part of the world, right? It's one of the most heavily populated parts of the whole planet. If you, if you cast the net wide enough to include, say, like Mexico City, Los Angeles, yep. you know, Edwards Air Force Base yep. is, oh, yeah. is around yep. there. You know, Beale so Air Force Base. He's got yeah. up to... a lot, a lot of stuff uh, in that region. And then, you know, the other thing, too, who today doesn't have a, a, a telephone with a, a video camera and an audio recorder and a still camera on it? Um, we're getting more and more reports today than ever before. Because, I mean, 20 years ago, I remember it was like, oh, my gosh, I Bigfoot and I were playing poker. Did you have a camera? <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't no, have a camera. Not, yeah. Now you always have a camera because you always have your phone on That's you. right. Well, how many videos and surveillance uh, setups do we catch stuff? Right. Yeah. Not just ghosts, but... Yeah. But it's, is more evidence better evidence? See, that's, that's the conundrum. Right. Because trying to wait out, you know... The weed from the, the chaff. chaff. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. And we've got apps that we know. We, I have yeah. them. They're lots of fun. You can put a ghost into any photo you take. You can have, you know, some ghost. Just saw another one on Facebook today, and the person put it up and said, oh, what do you think of this? It's a phone app. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's right, a- yeah. <laughs> the good news is they're so good, you're just like, yeah, they never really yeah. looks that good. Plus, yeah. you recognize it from three other ghost photos. <laughs> exactly. And you're like, exactly. that ghost gets around. Yeah, well, how about the other hoaxing that's going on, taking old known ghost photographs and then trying yes, to drop them into... Yes, that did happen not too long ago, yeah. Right. Uh, several occasions. Yeah. And the problem with that is it, it uh, I mean, I get it. Sometimes it's all in good fun. I'm for pranking someone as, as much as the next guy. Sure. But a good prank, you got to own it. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Like, exactly. you prank, I get you, and then I say, ha ha, I got you, right? And that's the right. end of it. Right. If you're going to do a good ghost one, make it Marley. You know, right. yeah. screws you. <laughs> but, but, it, but it is a problem because what happens is a few of those come out, and everybody says, see, it's just people faking stuff. And, it, and it's easier today than ever. Yes. You know, uh, to, to fake these things. And so, you know, it creates a, a conundrum. All right, let's move on to, uh, to Bigfoot because this, um, this story came out uh, June 2010. North Carolina, this is a, a video from a Fox affiliate. I actually think they were remarkably professional given how this thing is about to unfold. Let's, yeah, let's watch yeah. it. But the legend of Bigfoot is resurfing, resurfacing in a western North Carolina town. A man in Cleveland County says he saw the mythic beast just last week. And as Ann Sheridan reports, this isn't the first time a sighting's been reported here. I tried to call him. <laughs> Tim Peeler thought... <laughs> He was calling coyotes. Instead of them, him. He got something that frightened even the self-proclaimed mountain man. This thing was ten foot tall. He had beautiful hair. It scared me. Sergeant Mark Self as a Cleveland County deputy didn't see the creature this time. There was a eight to ten foot hairy man looking person. But remembers the stories of a Sasquatch when he was a kid. Was uh, killing some animals, breaking in chicken houses, killing chickens. It's the same M.O. that Tim says he saw for himself. The Sasquatch going after his dogs. I come out here and rough talk him and run him off. Got him to leave, called 911, then the creature came back. And I said, get away from here. Get. Get. And he went right back at that path again. 
And his hair was perfect. Hair was beautiful. Okay, now that guy's memorable. That went viral. Yeah, that was yeah, millions yeah. of views. You gotta love the guy. But but I, I give them you know credit. They bring out a police officer, which yeah. adds you know instant credibility. And there was um, no tongue in cheek really in that report. No, right? There wasn't. And so so maybe we, we've come along in the last few years. But um, but and that guy is is, is memorable. I yeah. mean, let's face it. I think people tried to give that guy his own reality show. <laughs> uh, so so before we saw that clip, we were talking about faking evidence, and uh, Matt just brought up. Very recently, yeah. um, this just happened. Just past week. Just, just oh, past week. S- silly as all heck. Eric, if you could bring up my laptop, um, you know, this this just happened. Rubber alien hoax gets Chinese man Mr. Lee arrested. So this guy created his own. That's a serious thing in China. They don't mess around. Yeah, I mean, you know. Um, you even did a silly uh, phone, uh, you know, claim that you took a picture with his phone, and it's like such a cartoon animated right. silly picture. I don't know what the guy was thinking, and he went as far as putting female genitalia on the dead alien. It's just kind of. Right, obnoxious and silly, but I don't. know, Maybe the guy should have been locked up. So, so okay, let's get back to Bigfoot here. Um, the idea that um, these sightings. The thing I love about Bigfoot sightings is that, of everything paranormal and unexplained, it's it's interesting to me because the the, the stories typically go kind of like that. Or I'm a hunter. I've been in these woods my whole life. Yeah. I've hunted everything here. I've trapped. I know what's in these woods. And this eight foot tall creature comes by, and. You know, it didn't belong here. I've never seen anything like it, and it kept walking. A, a lot of this, the sightings, they're not, um, they don't seem to be spiritual in nature. They don't seem to affect people other than, whoa, I've never seen anything like that. Um, you don't hear about abduct- abductions. You really don't hear about attacks, right? Uh, w- with Bigfoot. With Bigfoot, one of the first uh, recorded encounters was an abduction yes. of an individual, a French Canadian trapper, was uh, actually picked up in his. Uh, sleeping bag and held captive for a couple of days. Yes, wow. I've read and that the, story. And then there wild. are several other occasions where Bigfoot is, or Yetis have been known to take women and other people. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, no, yeah. I, it's, it's uh, so, I'm just imagine the ransom for yeah. beef jerky or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but at the same time, so, so you've got these, these sightings that are occurring with regularity. And, and sometimes they make the news because sometimes we've got video clips or whatever and you know, it's uh, yeah. you know, the, the story goes on, and and th- but there's some there's a power in these these creatures and in these stories that keeps that keeps calling to us again and again, and I think it's why the, the media covers it the way they do. They have to. They don't have yep. a choice. Because the stories know? keep coming out. Because we demand it. Um, one of the things. Let, let's let's do this last story, then we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll give some final thoughts on it. Uh, tell us about this castle UFO, Andrew. Oh yeah, this was uh, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, a photographer had just set uh, a camera up to take pictures of this. Uh, this castle, this location, and uh, while taking photographs, this object flew into it. And uh, the picture has actually been given to a few people t- for photo analysis, and they say that whatever it is, it is a solid object in the picture. It's not, you know, clouds catching shadow because it's uh, it's there and then it was gone. And the person taking the pictures saw it. I mean, the, the subject was supposed to be the castle, but lucked out and caught it. And it kind of right. reminds me, Matt, what was it, like right after World War II, there were the stories about the, the rocket ghost ships? Ghost rockets. Yeah, the right. ghost rockets. And it kind of yeah. reminds me of uh, w- the way the ghost rockets were described. Don't you, don't you agree? It also reminds me of a uh, couple of UFOs that were seen in uh, great numbers down in uh, Brazil. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Uh, other people may say, oh, that's... One of these classic rods, which turn out to also be uh, an, an insect. insect flying by the camera. But, but uh, the photographer, I'm not mistaken, saw the actually ob- saw, saw the was dumbfounded as the, you know they had the camera on a tripod and was taking the pictures. It was yeah. just oh my goodness! Right? Yeah. Did I catch it? So a couple of weeks ago, we had Peter Robbins on as a guest, yes. and um, he's great. And he, we, he was talking about the disclosure conference he went to about you know. Um, uh, disclosure of what we know, the government knows about UFOs and aliens. And his point is disclosure is happening. It's happening every single day. And could it be that the media is playing a role? Uh, Getting us used it, to the it, idea. In this disclosure. I mean, you know, you can't just have the president standing next to an alien saying, hey, they're here, you know? It turn uh, a lot of people's lives upside down. Right, but if, yeah. if, if it comes out in little drips and drabs like this through stories, even if it's tongue in cheek, mm-hmm. even if it's whatever, um, disclosures happening all the time with every book that's written, every media show, every YouTube video. Uh, Tons of countries have already, you know, basically let the cat out of the bag. We're one of the holdouts that are still, right. you know, mainly because we have most of the info, but yeah. So it, real quick, 10 seconds, if you're in charge of the media, do you think it's responsible to, to carry these stories, um, or would you withhold them? I would... I would... 
disseminate them, but with, um, l- let's call it a bit of prejudice. Right. So take it seriously, deliver yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, would, I would get it out there. If I was a news director, I'd get it out there. Just like you said, you want YouTube to beat you the story. Right. You might as well get it out there. And that's why we're here. We're trying to get it out there, too. Folks, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us aboard the mothership. Until next time, stay hot. <laughs>